making sales using QuickBooks Point of Sale. We're going to look at uh, adding a customer to a sale. We'll look at entering items on our sales receipt, applying discounts to items, different tenders, doing returns, and creating customer orders and finishing out those customer orders. So, switch back over to my point of sale. In point of sale, I'm going to choose make a sale. Under make a sale, I'm going to add a customer. And I want to add my son. So I'm going to start typing the last name. Well, he's not there. So I will continue to type in the last name, and I'll do add a new customer. If I wanted me, I would simply click on and choose my name. But I'm going to select add a new customer, and I will add in my son. You can add anything else about the customer that you would like, uh, company they work for, their phone number, a cell phone number, an email, their address. Uh, alternate phone, whatever you might like. And I will save that change, and it will add the customer's name to the top of the receipt. I can then add items to that receipt, and I can add items by scanning the item, which is the ideal way. I can do it by typing in an item number. I can do it by typing in a department that the item is, a partial description of the item. And when I'm typing in an item description, I don't have to type the entire item name. I can type part of the name. And usually three characters is enough. And I can type three characters, put a space, type three more characters, and put a space, and type three more characters if the item name is that long. And it will narrow down to the item I'm looking for. So if I enter in an item, So if I enter in that first item, by typing in the item name and press enter, it drops that item in. I can add an additional item. I don't have a barcode scanner. I would scan the item. If I wanted to find an item that had to do with something for mom, I could type in mom, and I can find we get a, a mommy hugs, a mommy princess frame, mom in a jar, and a mom mug. If I wanted the mom mugs, I can choose that, and I can add that. If I wanted whatever else you might be able to think of, uh, you can kind of type it in and see if you have any of those items that match what you want. Uh, If the Cookie Monster mug was on sale, I could select that mug. I can go over here to Quantity Price Discount. I can click on that, and I can add a discount to that item. That uh, discount would be for the a dollar amount, or it can be for a uh, percentage, either one. And you can choose whichever way you wish that discount to be given. So I'm going to give 15% off, so I'll put 15%. When you're giving a manual discount, which is what it is called when you discount one item, you should always choose a reason that you're giving that discount. Uh, the system comes with six pre-programmed reasons. You can add your own reasons uh, if those six don't suit your needs. You can get rid of any of those that you don't want or replace it with something that you want better. You can have at least eight different reasons that you can use for displaying your information. So this one is going to be a multi-discount because they're buying two different mugs. We'll say OK. And so we gave them a 15% discount, bringing the mug down to $10.20.
when I want to, I can also add to a receipt what they call a miscellaneous item. A miscellaneous item is an item that I'm selling which I don't have for some reason in my list of stuff. Maybe I have an old display that uh, I'm not using anymore and someone really likes it and so they would like to buy that display. I can sell that. I can go up here to I want to sell a miscellaneous item. And that brings up the option to sell that miscellaneous item. I need to enter how much I'm going to sell it for. And so I'm going to sell it for $20. And it adds that miscellaneous item. Whenever I put a miscellaneous item on a receipt, I always like to edit that item and change the name to something that makes more sense. Other than just playing miscellaneous item. Then, if sometime down the road, I find that item in my item list, I could do an exchange for the miscellaneous item on this receipt for the actual item that's in my inventory list and clear up that miscellaneous item off of my sales. So that's all that uh, David wants. So we have our total. Uh, we've got a subtotal of $42.95, sales tax of $257, a grand total of $45.52. The next thing is how are we going to pay for this item? When we're paying for an item on a sale, we can pay for an item with a cash payment, with a credit card payment. In fact, we can do three different credit cards on a single sale. We can do a debit card. We can do a single debit card, a single check, a single gift certificate, up to three different gift cards, or an account charge, which could be a charge to a accounts receivable account, or it could be a store credit. Because store credit and point of sale is filed under the account. So my customer wants to give me $20 cash and put the rest on their visa. So I'll choose cash. I will change the amount to $20. I'll save that. That now tells me that the balance due is $25.52. Whenever you are doing a split tender on a receipt or multiple tender types, you always want to start with entering the known tender amount so that you don't have to do the math. The computer's going to do the math for you, and you never look silly because you lost a number somewhere. So I'm also going to add the rest of the balance of the 2552 on the visa. If you are splitting a credit card, it's important that you change this amount to the amount you're putting on that card uh, before you proceed with authorizing that uh, card if you're using Intuit Merchant Services or choosing the credit card type if you're using a third-party credit card. So we now have this receipt taken care of. We have a zero amount due. We can now save and print this receipt. So we choose save and print. And I'm going to preview it, or we can't see what the results are. And we can see the receipt. We can see it lists all of our items, including the one that we had a discount on. It lists the totals for the receipt. And it lists the payment tender types. and reports that we had a $1.80 discount on this particular sale. At the bottom here, we have a barcode with a number under it. That number is the sales receipt number. That barcode represents that sales receipt number. And if this customer ever came back to uh, do a return, we would scan that barcode to bring up and do a return. I'm not going to email this customer. I can tell it never email this customer or just no for this time. So 
So if David were to come back and want to do a return, we could select accept return. We would scan that barcode or enter that receipt number, select the receipt, and we can see the items that are on the receipt. We have a couple of choices depending on the quantity of items he's bought of each item. If he's bought more than one of an item, but he's only returning one of that item, we can click in here where it says return quantity and type in how many. If he is returning the full quantity of that item he bought, we can simply check the return checkbox and that will add that item as a return. We can add those selected items to our sales receipt and now we have that as a return. I can come up here and if we're lucky, the customer wants to buy something else and simply do an exchange. If not, and we're refunding that customer, then down here at the bottom, it says we're giving cash change. Point of sale assumes when you're given a refund, you're giving that refund in the form of cash. If you're giving it in cash, all you've got to do is save and print the receipt. If you're giving it in some other form, then you would choose the other form. So I'm going to give the refund in cash. I'll do a save and print. It'll pop your cash drawer. I'll get this change pop-up that tells me give back 75 cents. I, do the, I give the change. I say OK. And it will then print my receipt and I get my receipt for the 75 cent refund. Whenever you give a refund, that item is added back into your inventory. And if there's something wrong with the item and it can't be and it cannot be resold, then you want to be sure to mark that item out of stock. To mark it out of stock, you would go up to inventory, down to a new quantity adjustment. You would find that item. You would choose the item. And if it can't be resold, you would want to adjust your quantity. I don't have five anymore. I've now got four because that one is not available. And it's not available because it was damaged. And that's why I can't resell it. I could also come down here to the bottom and add other comments as to why I'm not reselling that item. I can then save or save and print that uh, adjustment memo. Either way, I'm simply going to save it. And so that is making a sale, adding a discount to an item on a sales receipt, taking multiple tenders, and doing a return. Next thing I want to look at is selling something using a sales order and using a layaway. For a sales order, typically I'm going to go to customer orders and create a sales order. I could come over here and I could enter a couple of items on this sales receipt. This says I'm all out of this one. Well, that's why I'm putting it on here, because I need to special order it. So I'm going to say continue. And if I have something else I want to add, I can also add that other item to the receipt. I'm not selling it right now, because I don't have this patchwork in stock. I'm going to put this on a special order. So I'm going to go up here to I want to. And I can convert this order 
to a special order. So I can convert the order to a sales order. He will add my items to the sales order. Because I already put the customer's name on there, it adds the customer. And it tells me the total amount of the sale. It also tells me down here if the customer has any current balances on their account. Whenever I add an item and finish a sales order, generally I'm going to want to deposit on a sales order. So when I go over here and I say save and print, I hate it when it does that. I hate it. <laughs> it didn't ask me for my deposit. That's because somehow I don't have it set up. So here under preferences, under company preferences, down here under sales orders, you can suggest a purchase, uh, deposit amount. You choose what percentage you want, and I'm going to put 50%. You can do a suggested deposit or a required deposit. The difference is a suggested deposit, you can take that amount or more or less. With the required deposit, you can take that amount or more. You do not have the option to take less. When you're setting up the preferences for the uh, sales order, you should also add any particular messages for the printed message, such as no refunds, uh, deposits are non-refundable, uh, item must be picked up within 30 days of notice or whatever you want for your additional information for sales orders. You would do the same thing for layaways. You would suggest a deposit for your layaways. And again, a special message for what the layaway rules are. And I'll save that change. Since I already did this sales order, whoop, that's a new sales order. Get out of there. Since I already did that one sales order, I can go back to that sales order and I can take a deposit after the fact. To take a deposit after the fact, I can either go up here to I want to take a deposit. Or I can collapse this, which shows me what's on that sales order. And I can come over here to the Take a Deposit button and say I want to take a deposit. And I want to take a deposit of $12. And I'll say OK. I will get my deposit screen, which says how am I paying this deposit. I'm paying it with cash. He's going to hand me a $20 bill. I'll be giving him $8 change. I'll accept the change. I'll save and print that. And I'll send it off to the printer. And we can see that it tells us that we made a $12 deposit. His new balance is $8.49. He gave us $20. We gave him $8 back. And it says, give the $8 change. So when, when I come back to actually pick up this merchandise, again, you are going to go to order list, choose view your sales orders, find the one you're looking for. You want to come over to sell items. Sell items will bring up a list of what you have. I can select all. This says I still don't have that, but that's okay. I'm going to continue, and I will continue. It's going to add those items to a sales receipt. And this little note says I can sell more stuff if they want to. Okay. Well, this is all that I want today. So it shows me here that my deposit has been applied of $12. I still owe $849. So I will pay that with another $10 cash. I'll save and print, give a $1.51 change, 
and I get my receipt, which shows me my items, shows me the amount that was tendered, shows me the change. $12 was in a form of a deposit. $10 was in the form of cash. And there is no balance due, at least not on this receipt. If you're doing a layaway, a layaway works very similar. On a layaway, you would choose customer orders. You would choose a new layaway. You see it looks almost exactly the same as the sales order. You pick who is your customer. You add your customer. Again, you add what it is that they are going to be purchasing this time. So you add the items that they're putting on layaway. Again, you can pull them from the pull down. You can do them by searching for something. And you can add the items. When you have all the items that are being entered on this layaway, again, you can do the save and print. It'll pop up and say, here is your deposit. For the layaways, I said a third down, assuming that they're going to make two more payments and pay off the layaway. Well, we're going to round that up to a nice even $10. We'll say OK. We'll accept that payment. We'll save and print the receipt. And we can see we get the receipt for the deposit. Tells us we have the $10 deposit. We have a balance of $17.84 remaining. We also get another print. The other print is the actual layaway itself, showing the items that were put on layaway the deposits that have been taken to this point, the current deposit balance, and the current balance due. And that will again then show up down here in my order list under layaways so that we can come in when the customer wants to make a deposit. We can take an additional deposit. We could take another $10. We can accept that payment. If we save and print, we will see now that we have a total of $20 deposit and a balance of $784 remaining. And just like on the sales order, when the customer finally comes in to finish paying off their layaway and pick up their merchandise, they'll choose the sales order list. They'll choose layaways. You'll bring up your layaway. And then you're going to sell the items. Again, I'll select them all. I'll continue and continue. It's going to add them to a sales receipt, just like before. It tells me I can sell other additional items if I want to. I can see here's that $20 of deposit I put down and my balance of $784. So I will pay off the balance. I'll save and print. It says give back the 216 change. And I print out my final receipt, showing my items, showing my deposit taken, cash taken, change given and no balances, everything is squared away. And that item then will disappear off of my order list because it's not an open order anymore, it's a closed order, and closed orders do not show up on the order list. However, you should periodically go into your order list and take a look at all your orders so that you can find your closed orders you can see this one is closed, and clean those up by deleting those. Because once they're closed, you no longer need them. And all they do is clutter up your system. Your system has to back them up every time you do a backup, making your backups continue to get larger and larger and larger. 
And so if you clean those up, your backups won't keep getting bigger, and it won't start to slow down your computer. So any questions on any of those? No? All right. So that takes care of returns. That takes care of customer orders. And it takes care of making sales. There is one other thing on my making sales list, and that is mobile point of sale. Mobile point of sale lets you sell an item on a mobile device, such as an iPhone, an iPad, an Android phone, or an Android pad, and treat it like a portable point of sale terminal. It has a couple of limitations, and those limitations are that when you are adding an item to the sale on the mobile device, you have to either enter the name of the item and search for it, or scroll through a list of items and find it on the list. At this time, you cannot scan the barcode or even type in the item number to locate the item. Intuit is working on that, but at this time, unfortunately, that's not an option. So if we choose Mobile Sync and we watch the mobile sync demo Is there commentary with this video? Yes, there is. You're not we hearing can't that audio? Hear it through the phone. No, not through the phone. Well, how rude of them. <laughs> <laughs> They're not dialed in. They're not dialed in. Basically, he's just telling you that you can do it on the mobile device, that you need to sign in. You have to go to uh, apps and download GoPayment to load that device onto your mobile. Uh, you can get a credit card scanner, scan your credit cards, and then you have the customer sign right on the mobile device, and then you email them their receipt. The point of sale and the mobile device exchange data with each other. They exchange data on the time frame that you choose, anywhere from every five minutes to every 24 hours, and it will send data back and forth uh, between those devices. Then in point of sale, anything that you sold on a mobile device will show up under your regular sales items. In addition to being able to take credit card payments, you can also take cash or checks on a mobile device. The only challenge with that is if you're out of the store and you're not back in the store uh, at the end of the day and you've taken cash, when you go to reconcile your cash store, it's going to be short whatever cash you've made for sales on the mobile device because you have it wherever you are, not back in the store. And that's the only real challenge there. But uh, the mobile device does allow you to do that integration between point of sale and a mobile device. Another thing, you might have seen a note from Intuit saying that there is a security update that you need to do. That security update is pretty simple to do. On your point of sale server, you would go up here to help. Go down to Software Updates and tell it to check for updates. If you're up to date, it's not going to find anything. So it'll go out and check. I said it'll go out and check. Come back, come back, wherever you are. And it will tell us whether we have any updates to apply. There we go. If we have any updates to apply, you simply 
follow the prompt and tell it to go ahead and do that update. When you're doing that update, all the other computers that may have access to point of sale need to be out. So this tells me I have one update available. To add that update, I would simply hit OK. It would download the update and install it. I don't want to do that at the moment because we don't want to wait 10 minutes for that to do its thing. But once you've updated your server, your point of sale server, you would then reopen point of sale. And if you have any additional computers that access point of sale, you would then go open those computers on point of sale. It would tell you you need to apply an update because your server is now at a different update level than that workstation. You'd click OK, do the update, and it would update that workstation. And that's really all there is to it. It's really pretty simple. Not a bad idea that before you do that, to go up and do a backup of your data just in case. I haven't ever had anything happen, but better safe than sorry. So if no one has any additional questions, that's all I've got for you. Thank you very much. Sure appreciate right. that. This uh, webinar, that, since I did record it, will be available uh, on our website. And they will send out a notice telling you where you can access it to get to it. If you didn't happen to make it, they will also send you a notice letting you know that uh, we did this webinar and telling you where you can go to, to access that data to see what you missed. If you have any questions, you can always give us a call and we will do our best to get them answered for you. So on that note, everybody have a great rest of the day, and we will talk to you again soon. Bye-bye.